So, you want to know the best OSINT tools for finding hidden information. Well, in this video, we're going to go through four different tools that are great to do just that. Everything is timestamped down below, so if you want to skip to a specific tool, then feel free to do so. The first tool we'll be starting off with is Google Docs. Now, this is a great resource which is linked down below. It basically allows you to leverage Google search engine by using advanced search operators to perform precise and targeted searches like you can see on the screen. These operators will allow you to refine the queries to find specific information that you're looking for that might not be regularly available when doing normal search queries. So you can see we have security related ones in this section here where you can search for things like PDF files or pages with specific titles or for specific things like PowerPoints or websites. Then we have internal server related docs where you can see a whole list of them here where you can search for things with like API in their text or specific text phrases like AWS access key. So different ones there. Then we have server configuration related docs. So these are all just examples of things you can do. It's like a cheat sheet. So I recommend that you check it out. And just to show you an example here, we've searched all in text, username and password. So we're then provided with all things that contain the word username and password. And we'll do another example here of file type PDF. And when we paste that in, we can see that we've given file types as PDFs, which we can see on the right hand side there. And they also contain the words password. So obviously the more specific you are, the better results that you'll get. It's really interesting and I highly recommend you just try it. The next one we'll do is PDF files on .edu websites. So you can see you're taken to universities and you have PDF files. Really good resource when you're looking for something specific on Google and you want to get to that result fast. The next tool we then have is Grey Noise. Now Grey Noise, if you've not heard of it before, is a cybersecurity tool that basically provides you threat intelligence related to internet background noise. So it helps you distinguish between benign internet scans and activities all the way through to malicious ones. So it basically collects and analyzes data from multiple sources to identify and classify internet wide scan and attack patterns. What does that all mean? Well, we'll have an example shortly. You can basically review the current trends and click into them to see the data. So we'll run through a few examples now where we have a look at the interface and see what search queries we can do. So if you're not sure exactly on what to do and what to search for at the beginning, you can go to the explore trends section just to see what examples there are, or we can click one of the ones above, which is just to show me any IPs with the tags anonymous Fox scanner. Then we have our results already laid out and we can dive into those individually. So we have a list of all malicious IP addresses that have been tagged with anonymous Fox scanners. And then if we go back to click into one of the other examples for another use case, we can show me devices that are looking for a specific CVE. So this will now scan gray noise for any devices that have this CVE. And we've got already a list of malicious IP addresses that have been tagged with that CVE. And we can scroll through those and view them accordingly. So really, really useful. And then, like I said, if you're not wanting to explore trends, you can go in and manually do some queries, whether you're searching for an IP, an actor or specific tags. And you can use the cheat sheet there to help you do so. Just as an example, we'll pop in our own IP address there and we can see what example has been given on the screen. So we can see when it was first seen, last seen, the country originates from, and just some general analysis that you can use for threat intelligence. So that covers the gray noise tool. The next one we have is then virus total. Now, if you're not already familiar with this tool, then it's something that you're going to use every day if you're conducting investigations. Virus total is basically seen as the Google of malware. The search feature that they have is free and available to anyone to use. So click the link in the description and try it out straight away. And when you get to this UI, you'll be able to search. And when you do so, what they do in the background is inspect the items with over 70 antivirus scanners and URL domain block listing services. And once you run your search and you've got your analysis, it gets even better because you can even go through comments that other users have posted about the files or URLs. And you can also go on to inspect things like passive DNS data and retrieve threat intelligence details 
regarding the domains and IP addresses. So what I'd like to do is give you a demonstration of when you search something and the information you get back. So what we'll do is we have a SHA-256 hash here and all we need to do is click onto the search box and pop that in there to see what we get back. And once we paste that in, you can see we can do a URL, an IP address or a domain. But like I said, we'll be searching this hash and we'll see what we get back. Already straight away, we've been told that 39 out of the 65 security vendors have flagged it as malicious. And we can go to see either similar things by hash or perm hash, or we can dive into other analytics. But just to show you what we have on screen is all the security vendors that have firstly detected this as malicious. And then underneath those, you'll have the ones that either have not detected it or will say unknown. And we can then also dive in deeper to see what information we have. We have things like details, relations or behavior. In the details tab, you can see the basic properties, the history of when this was first submitted, the names it comes under, and things like certificate attributes and different permissions. So a whole load of information just by you submitting something to VirusTotal. Then you also have a tab called relations where you can see the contacted domains and IP addresses and the behavior of what you submitted. So there's a whole lot of information here that you can use. They also have an API which you can use with obviously certain restrictions. So check that out first but then you can also go to things like community and see what other users are posting. I'm pretty sure you need to have a virus total account to leave a comment though. So that not might not be something you can do with just a free account. I'm not too sure, but I highly recommend you use this tool if you are a SOC analyst or you just want to dive in deeper to things like malware analysis or threat intelligence. It's a really good tool. That covers virus total. So the final one that we have is URL scan. Now this is a great tool that I've mentioned in previous videos. I again use this one a lot and it's a free service to scan and analyze websites. When you submit a URL scan to them, it basically does an automated process by browsing the URL just like a regular user and it will record all the activity that that page navigation creates. So this includes things like the IPs that were contacted, the resources that were used like JavaScript, CSS, or the requested activities from those domains, as well as in additional information on the page itself. So it's a great one for analyzing dodgy URLs or phishing emails if that's the kind of activity that you do. And just as a demo here, you can see some recent scans on the homepage of other users as you can do public or private scans. And you have the option to do a country selection where if you don't want it to run from the country that you're in, you can, for example, do it as if it was running from Canada. And you can also switch the user agent if you want to see how it acts from a different device. So just as an example, we'll click on one of these random URLs that have been submitted and you can see we have this screen. So we're presented with a lot of information. And first up, we have the summary where we can see how many IPs were contacted and in how many countries. We then have live information and a Google safe browsing classification and then also a screenshot. We can dive into the HTTP transactions. For this one in particular, we can see that 11 HTTP uh, actions were taken and we can dive into redirects, links and specific behavior of that link. All of this was done within seconds from when we clicked the link. So it's really great at giving you information behind a URL if you're not too sure. So again, I highly recommend you click the link in the description and you give it a go. It might be something you can use easily in your investigations or use to automate a process in your workflow. It's really good at doing things the safe way rather than obviously you visiting it yourself or even just using a sandbox that you have. Hopefully that's been useful for you. And if it has and you enjoy this type of content, do join our Discord. The link will be in the comment section. If there's anything wrong with it, just let me know but we talk about all things cybersecurity and I'm always sending useful hints and tips to help you in your career or just general cybersecurity advice. If you liked the video, please do leave a like on it. It massively helps it out and it tells me that you're enjoying this type of content and I'll keep doing it.